my friends, and welcome back to the garden. Today, we are busting out the power tools and finally installing this trellis that I made. So I ended up going to a workshop that uh, you would make a trellis out of reclaimed pallet wood. They kind of pre-sliced everything for you and we uh, used a nail gun to assemble it. So much fun. Oh my gosh, I also ended up making that planter box you see behind the trellis where I set all the power tools and stuff, the drills and stuff. So anyway, <laughs> I'm really excited about this thing. There's a little wormy guy here from moving the apple tree out of the way. There are so many worms in the garden. I love my worms. Uh, but my clematis is right back there, sitting pretty. Hopefully I don't squash it during all of this. But um, it is a rosemore, which should be like this really uh, pretty uh, pink with a yellow center flower. It didn't flower last year. It barely survived last year. So it'll flower this year, hopefully. Look at my beautiful trellis. It's going to be a great addition to the clematis. And I might end up planting more clematis. So thankfully, I, the one that I did plant is perfectly on center. So if I do want to plant more, I might plant one to the left and one to the right and uh, help fill this trellis out over the season, you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I don't know how much clematis eventually grows and fills out. Do you think it would fill out this entire trellis? Let me know what you think. Before I get ahead of myself, we're gonna need to clear the bed out for any large debris. I move my little mushroom guy out of the way for now. Um, and I'm just gonna come in here and move any dead plant debris, sticks, things like that. There was a rabbit's nest of sorts that was in here the bunnies have already outgrown it and they've left the nest so now i can get in here and move all of that uh debris out of the way i'm gonna need a shovel real quick to get in under the strawberries uh and dig out for the apple tree that i'm gonna plant this is a fairly young apple tree still at this stage i think it's only on year two this yeah, it's only two years old um, and I haven't pruned it or anything like that yet. It's also a dwarf, so it should stay relatively small. I'm going to take it and put it here uh, in the corner, kind of sort of in the middle, but still far enough away from this trellis that it shouldn't impede any of the clematis's growth. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, dig out a large enough hole that I've got some wiggle room right here. And look at all of these strawberries, you guys. There's just so many of them. Uh, the oregano, I'm going to leave exactly where it is. The onion might have to come up. All these weeds are going to have to go, but let's get to it. there was going to be a lot of strawberries in this raised bed but holy strawberries i mean over 20 at least from this area alone uh and i will go back and plant them in once we're done but as of right now i've decided that i'm going to hold off on planting this and i'm going to get this trellis in first and just get that screwed in because i'm worried about the tree being in my way all right, I stopped back inside to grab uh, a few more supplies so that I could uh, take some measurements and pre-drill some holes here. When you're doing these types of things, it's good to pre-drill uh, the holes before you go ahead and screw them in. And I took some measurements for how deep I wanted this to go and also took note of where the existing screws are uh, for when I made the raised bed because I do not want to uh, drill into any of the existing screws, obviously. So after taking those measurements, it was time to drag this baby out into the field uh, <laughs> so that I could pre-drill the holes real quick in this. I decided to only do two screws in each of the posts. I really don't think for the weight that this is going to bear that it's going to need anything more drastic than that. So um, I'm just going to try to shimmy this back in and then we're going to go ahead and get the first anchoring screw in there. Uh, look at me re-measuring and being all careful. 
<laughs> it's a pattern here because I'm constantly second guessing myself. But um, thankfully, I was able to get uh, the first one in here without much of a problem. Putting in the second one, though, posed a little bit more of an issue, and I really wanted to make sure that it was level because if I screwed this in and it was going to be cockeyed after this, I was going to lose my mind. So I had packed a bunch of dirt under it before I screwed it in, and as you saw, made sure that it was level, screwed it in, and then made sure it was level again. <laughs> Is it plum? Ah, don't ask me if it's plum. <laughs> But it's level, okay? So after that, uh, after making sure I did both sides, I went and did the top screws for uh, both the left and the right. And, uh, and she was ready to go after this, man. Quick Clamata status check. So I did drop my tape measure on her and kneel on her, but she's hardy. She's a tough gal and hanging in there. It is time to chuck it from the bucket. So out this apple tree went and I needed to dig a hole basically the size of the root ball, which was pretty easy to do. Uh, I just filled up the container with some of the soil so that it was easier to, to dig everything out and just have a space for it real quick. And it worked out. Uh, I just slid it back into the hole and uh, thankfully the soil level has evened out now because there used to be a giant cavity in the corner from all the voles and shrews digging around back there. So everything's now evened out uh, the soil level. And uh, yeah, that's just such a great blessing in and of itself. Thanks, apple tree for adding some soil mass to this raised bed. Greatly appreciate it, buddy. All that's left to do now, as far as the plants go in this bed, is to figure out where the heck I'm gonna put all these strawberries. I am gonna keep them all in the same bed. I'm not gonna move any of them out, but I do need to decide where I'm gonna put them. Please look at my beautiful garden manicure. Maybe she's Maybelline, maybe she's dirt. <laughs> so I do have a ton of these strawberries left here and I'm going to leave them mostly in the center, away from the clematis, away from the apple tree. But I think that's gonna complete the bed after this for planting. There's not gonna be much space for anything once I'm done filling in this bed with strawberries there will be space in the back like i said before for potentially two more clematis plants to fill this out but uh this is this is really it so um another one bites the dust you guys just kidding <laughs> but that is another bed fully planted we've got the fully planted uh flower bed in the back there in the back row and now it'll be this one fully planted with a mix of flowers, fruit from the strawberries. Maybe I can fit in a few more spring onions and things like that, or some lettuce tucked around here, but that's it for, uh, for that bed this year. We've completely flipped it for the spring season and gotten her ready to go. Wow, look at us. Oh, so productive. While I was tidying up, I did find the tag for this, you guys. And if you were curious, it is a Kinder Crisp apple tree. And like I said, it is a dwarf. So it should stay relatively small. And I'm going to prune it so that the branches don't uh, get too crazy. This bed here is going to be next, you guys. We're going to tackle that apple tree and flip that bed. But that's it, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. 